Hi, and welcome to The Question. This is the show where Russell and I ask a question. We debate it. We'll see whether we agree or disagree. And then we throw it over to you, the public, to see what you really think on the issue about a question you didn't know you wanted the answer to. They are the most important questions of the day, aren't they? So moral dilemmas. Really. Ah, moral, hardly. Moral <laughs> dilemmas. Moral dilemmas. Right, but here's one that gets people's goat, right? Yeah. So uh, imagine you work in an office, as uh -huh. many, many people do. Um, not everybody's still working from home, by the way. Some people okay. have actually gone back to work apart from the civil service. C civil servants the must civil be service. However, uh, there's a propensity now that if you're a smoker and mm -hmm. you work in an office or a factory or on the shop floor, wherever you work, that because you smoke, you believe you have the God-given right to take a break. <laughs> to take a oh break every hour and a half or so, uh -huh. to go outside, sit out on the pavement, having a fag for 10 minutes, and you repeat that every hour and a half or so. And if you're a non-smoker working in that particular business, you're working harder, aren't you? The thing is, there's a balance, right? Because most of the jobs I've worked, I've absolutely hated. So I had moments where I would go into the toilet for 20 minutes, and just breathe and try and get myself together. But not together. every hour and a half. Oh yes, every, every hour. Every hour and a half. I hated my job that much. I would go, so I just think- I that think you might be slightly more on I, the unusual side of that. Listen, I, I, look, most people don't like that job. I don't think it's fair, but I think what should happen is, if you're in an office with smokers, there should be um, like, turn a blind eye-ish to non-smokers that go out for a walk or just to have a breather or hide in the toilet. Like that I actually happens to. though, right? So, so we know that smokers have this kind of, I mean, look, I'm an ex-smoker. I gave up about 20 years ago, right? So yeah. I, I've been both. I'm a non-smoker. I don't really care about people that smoke as in I've got no particular truck with them. Yeah. But I've smoked. So I, I know what it's like when you need a cigarette, need a cigarette, big inverted commas. Um, but that doesn't mean that you have the right to go out and to every hour and a half as you believe you want one to go out and have I, But one. I also think that because they're addicted, obviously. Well, they are. And that, look, that, there, there's obviously reasons behind why people go out and smoke, you know, more than one a day, right? Because yeah. they, they believe they're addicted, whether it's in the head, whether it's clinical, is it is a kind of another matter. But, you know, if it were as simple as non-smokers being able to then go out and do their own thing, have another half an hour at lunch or yeah. go out for a walk, if it was that simple, fine. But that doesn't happen, right? So, and, but and it actually, doesn't happen in if some I, offices. If I said to my boss when I was working, let's say, you know, whatever, in, in a previous job in the 90s, mm. um, well, I'm just going out for a walk for 20 minutes and yeah. I did that twice or three times a day, he'd laugh and think I was kidding and they'd probably fire me. But if I was yeah, a smoker, I think it depends on your boss. I I generally think this depends on where you work. I've been in an office where there were people that took the Mickey and just went to smoke all the time, but then they'd have no problem with me walking out, saying I just need to stretch my legs going out. I hated the, I've, I've hated every single job I've been in. But I, I I don't think that's the norm. I think the norm is that it seemed to be acceptable for mm. people that smoke as if they've got some kind of disease or something that they well, must they, probably they do. must go out and oxygenate their lungs with nicotine. The disease is called addiction. So. Yeah, but when yeah okay, so if I've got a gambling addiction. Uh, addiction is it okay for me to sod off at two o'clock to the casino to go yeah. and stick a load of money on red? I mean, it's not. You know, if, is if it I'm, during your lunch break? If, if I'm it a heroin is, addict, then... is it okay for me to go out and jack up on heroin in the park three times a day because I'm a heroin addict? Hold of on, if it's, it if it's if if that, okay, the the gambling one. If it's during your lunch break and you want to go squander your money, no, but this is extra. This is extra. So okay. your your addiction argument is that okay because you've got an addiction. You're sounding a bit snowflakeish, actually. Um, <laughs> Because you've got an addiction, we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt. My, yeah. my issue is, what about the people that don't smoke, don't gamble, don't do heroin in the park? Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. Uh, why should they have to work seven hours where plus their lunch break, when in effect, if you're a smoker, you're only working six hours a day? And it's okay. okay. I it's get it. Yeah, because okay. if, if, if it affects productivity, yeah, I get yeah. it. Yeah, okay, well, it's that almost, makes sense. Hang on, you and I talk about discrimination a lot, right? Yeah. As in, you know, race or gender or trans, whatever. This is discrimination. It's almost discrimination you know towards non-smokers. You know what I've heard? I've heard a lot of people say that's how that's a good way to know about what's going on in the corporate, like the sort of the office environment. So a lot of the times, especially like in banking and stuff, when everyone's going out to smoke, you have these informal chats and you get to know the lowdown and what's really going so on. So smoking networking. Exactly, like HR and stuff. And obviously it's not the same so you as think it was it should 15 be encouraged? years ago. Please don't. No. I, you know the worst thing is walking behind a smoker. It's disgusting. Mm. But no, obviously I don't encourage it. And it's not like the 50s or 60s with Wolf of Wall Street, everyone's having a smoke or whatever. But I do get it. There, there are those elements where you actually, you network better. It's like the same argument for, for not working from home because it could, 
you know, and these people fi- managed to find a way to make everything about women and black people and all of these things. But anyway, they say women will be disadvantaged because they'll be seen as not working hard enough because they're not in the office and they don't get the office banter and building that relationship and stuff like that. I think that kind of contact still matters, informal contact. So, so, so let me ask a supplementary question. Okay. If you're head of an organization, mm-hmm. manager in an organization, and you're interviewing people, mm-hmm. do you think it's okay to ask them if they smoke? And do you think it's then okay to judge whether you employ them based on whether they smoke or not? Because so I do. So I think if I'm employing, really, yeah, if I'm employing, you get people, sued. No, if I, it's not yet illegal or discriminatory to discriminate against smokers. Mm-hmm. But if I know that they're literally, genuinely, it seems and perceived is okay for them to work six hours as opposed to everybody else's seven hours as a non-smoker, I have the right to not employ them, don't I? You do. Um, I would not employ them on the basis that they make the offer to stink. Yeah, it's a slightly different. Uh, slightly, no, it's just horrible. Like, it's, I was in the lift with someone yeah. was no, like, I, 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 and I, it's I do not understand how it's tolerated that because someone chooses to smoke. And believe me, before you all start kicking off as smokers, we don't choose to smoke. We're addicted. No, you're not. I gave up. Millions <laughs> what of people give up. We don't choose to smoke. Mill- millions of people give up. Right? You choose to smoke the same as you choose to drink or you choose to go to the cinema or you choose yeah. to eat a particular food. Right? You choose. And um, why is it okay for you to work less than people that don't smoke? I think it's absolutely outrageous. I think just assuming they do work less. Smoking breaks should be stopped. Or yes, Esther, you're a smoker, right? You smoke your forty Rothmans a day or whatever. You don't. But yeah, let, I was let's, let's use, you, use yeah. you as an example. It's you fine. have to work an hour longer. Yeah, or just don't go to lunch. If you want to go out for ten minutes six times in a working day, have lunch at yes, the desk. Just don't have lunch. No, no, not even that. Because how can because that's distracting you. So you're either there to work or you're not. You should not have more time off because you're a smoker. Otherwise, it should apply to other things. I get that. I get that. So should we look at what the public thinks? Yes, I'm very curious. So we, asked, we asked the question of the public, uh, and we said, do you think that allowing cigarette breaks is unfair on non-smokers? Uh, we asked two questions, actually. The other one, simply, mm-hmm. was should smokers be allowed cigarette breaks? So the resounding answer from 66.6% of the public was no. Smokers should not be allowed cigarette breaks. Yeah. Right. I think they might have been nervous about that in a legal context. Like it's in your contract, you're allowed cigarette breaks, which would just be a, I'm not sure. is it an absurdity. Context? It's not. That, obviously not. There's there's obviously an informal element to employment where your manager kind of, because well, everything is. And do you think it depends on whether the manager smokes or not? Yeah, exactly. I bet I if think the manager smokes, yeah, it's fine. If and the manager it could actually help you move up the ranks. If your manager smokes, you go out with him for a smoke break and you talk about, you know, your future. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what if I've got a chocolate addiction? And, and I need to go outside and eat a bar of chocolate six times a day and for 10 minutes Why would you need is to go that, outside for that? Is that okay? Well, you know, just in case someone nicks it. I mean, if you had a chocolate point. addiction and we'd be arguing about something completely so different. Next question, the supplementary then was, do you think allowing cigarette breaks is unfair on non-smokers? 73% of people, 73% of people think it is unfair. It is unfair on non-smokers. So, so the majority seems to be with me here that this yeah. is, you know, completely... Uh, completely outrageous, really, that you as a smoker should be it's, treated better. It's unfair if that there's no compensation, right? So if you tell non-smokers, actually, you get to have a bit more time off or we will be lenient to you, like, taking mm. some time. You don't necessarily have to go out and if smoke. You, um, so if you added it up, right, mm-hmm. this is going to be scary. So let's say you take an extra hour a day as a smoker. So that's mm-hmm. five hours a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's, what, 250 hours a year if you work every week, which mm-hmm. I maybe you wouldn't. So let, let's call it 200. That's 200 hours that mm-hmm. you get off. So maybe, yeah, maybe it should be extended to holidays. So if you're a smoker, you get your four weeks. But if you're a non-smoker, you get six weeks. Or maybe the other way around. Oh, that I four would weeks, absolutely be... Four weeks holiday as a non-smoker. Yeah. But if you are a smoker, you only get two weeks holiday. I would love that. that I would love extra Maybe holiday. that's the answer. Let us know what you think in the comments. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Another fascinating <laughs> insight to the uh, Quest- psychology of society. I know. Questions you didn't know that you wanted the answer to because you've probably never thought about it. All right, so look, uh, let us know what you think in the comments and uh, by way of subscribing to this wonderful channel that um, it's not not boring, it's not news cycle stuff, this, is it? It's not. We're kind of um, making our own news. It's it's literally like the things you thought, "Mm, actually, I didn't know I wanted the answer to that. What, do, mm. what does everyone else think? You come to it's us. It's kind of dinner party debate, isn't yeah, it? Where, exactly. you know, you've had a couple of drinks and, you know, everyone's arguing with each other and some people will be on one side of the debate and others will be on the other side of the debate. That's kind of what we're doing here. And it's uh, hopefully... I'm not old enough to have dinner parties, so I don't know. <laughs> right. Okay. Until next time, I guess. See you. Bye. Right, cheers. Thanks for watching.